Hello, this is Ken Quigley from Keystroke Quality Computing, and this is a brief demonstration on how to restore a subscriber database, or what is otherwise known as an RDB, standing for Remote Database Backup. As an act hosting company, we frequently have to send out RDBs to our customers for them to restore to their local computers, allowing them to sync with our centralized servers. So the process is pretty simple. You'll be sent an email with a link to the database and you'll download it to a location on your hard drive that's easy for you to remember and easy to retrieve. So in our case, we have stored it in C colon backslash act data backslash RDB. So we click on file, we click on restore and we select database. We have three choices here, but the only one that concerns us in this instance is the third one, unpack and restore a remote database. So that's pretty straightforward. We click on OK. We click on Browse, and we scroll over to RDB. We select Act Demo, and here's the source location that we just selected, and here's the, de the destination. Now, you'll see this little checkbox here that says Share this database with other users. This particular location um, would only need to be shared if you were restoring this to a computer that other people would be accessing the database uh, from other computers, like sharing it across the network. In this instance, and in most instances, it's just going to be for individual users on their laptops or individual workstations. So we're going to leave this unchecked. I'm going to click on OK. It's going to restore the database. This is a pretty small database, so this will go pretty quickly. Sometimes when databases are several gigs, it can run anywhere from 10, 15, 20 minutes. Now, this message is uh, was new with Act 16, and what it does is it will present this uh, request where it says after the RDB has been restored, it really is no longer needed. And that is, in fact, true, because once you've restored it and you've synced with it, it cannot be restored in any other place or really by any other user, including this location. Would you like to remove this file now? We strongly recommend yes. So this file is removed. Now, in this case, the, when you log in for the first time, you have to be either an administrator or a, um, a regular user with what's called remote administration privileges. I'm not gonna get into the details of this, but please mention this to your ACT administrator and he'll ensure that your user account at least has temporarily remote administration privileges so that you're able to log in and activate the database. So I'm just gonna enter in our password. I don't recommend clicking on this. We jokingly refer to this as the forget password um, checkbox because after clicking on this and logging in for a period of time, you will actually have no memory of this. So I strongly recommend that you just get in the practice of quickly entering in a password so you're not reliant upon it when you clear preferences and you have no earthly idea uh, what it is and it has to be reset for you. It's a big inconvenience versus the time that you supposedly save with this. So leave it unchecked, click on OK. Now it's going to log you into the database for the first time. And accordingly, what it's going to do when it brings you in, it's going to prompt you to sync for the first time. Now, what you're going to like to hear is that when the database was cut initially by your administrator or by us, um, it has already been pre-configured with all its synchronization settings. So it knows where and what to sync to. So if you click on yes, you'll know very quickly if these settings are correct and if you can use them moving forward. So click on OK or Yes. In most cases, when you're using your database, this kind of syncing will take place in the background and you will never even see it. I'll show you how to configure that after the fact. Okay, so as you can see, this is a pretty straightforward and quick process, and most of the time you won't even see it running. So this took about between, you know, 15 to 30 seconds. Click on OK or Close, and now this is done. In the future, if you want to push a manual sync on demand, and this is uh, particularly useful if you have laptops, you've worked for a little while and you want to do one final sync before closing up for the day, click on Tools, Click on Synchronize Database and click on Synchronize Now. And again, it will run through the sync. Now, you may run into some cases where 
you'll see here that the top bottom and the bottom, uh, the top row and the bottom row are the only ones that show any progress. And that's because there's absolutely no changes between the, the two sinks. So don't get alarmed and think that there was anything skipped over. It's just that it obviously recognizes that there's no difference between um, the last two sinks. So I'll click on OK. Now, what you can also do to improve reliability of synchronizing is click on Tools and Schedule Your Sync. And that is done with Act Scheduler. Now, if this is a subscriber database, this process is pretty straightforward. Click on Create Task, Browse, and it's going to ask you to browse to the database that you just restored, which is right here. It's going to ask you to put in your username and password. Click on Next. You're going to select Tasks. Now, because this is a, a remote database, you'll see this option. If this were a regular database, you would only see database maintenance and backup. You click here, click next, and now you're gonna configure the scheduling. I recommend that most people select hourly. Depending on the urgency of the updates, you can select whatever intervals suit your needs. I'm gonna select every four hours and boost this up so that I have syncing running from eight till eight. Okay, there's still only four, but the frequency is not as often. So I click on Next. Now I can configure this so that it will send me an email notification if for any reason it fails, but that's really beyond the scope of this demo. So I click Finish. And now this is done. Now the way you can tell that it will run in the background is if you see this Start Service um, display here and it is uh, grayed out. That means that you basically you can't start it because it already has been started. Stop service is available here. If we click on exit it does not affect anything and it's uh, ready to run and will continue to run in the background. And that's all you need to know. For regular use you will continue to use ACT um, as you would normally and the synchronizing will occur in the background and in most instances you will be totally unaware. <clears throat> if there are changes made to the master database, um, adding a field, changing fields, things like that, you'll occasionally be presented with a lock database message where the database will have to be locked. You will not be able to work on it while it's synchronizing and those changes from the master database or the publisher will be passed down to the uh, to the remote databases so that it can support the same schema as it's described. And that's it. Hope you enjoy this demonstration and look forward to working with you in the future.